Welcome to Corporate Finance. Welcome to session 12 of Introduction to Corporate Finance. And uh, today we're going to talk about a very, very interesting topic, and that is lessons from capital market history. Uh, we'll talk about total returns and percentage returns and some statistics we can use to uh, help us project returns into the future. And we can look at what has happened over the last 75 to 80 years of um, returns in several different instruments. We'll look at small cap stocks, large cap stocks, government bonds, uh, corporate bonds, and just general inflation. What has it done over the last 75 to 80 years? We'll look at some equations that will help us. Uh, what is the average return? What is the total return? Dividend yield plus capital gains yield on a stock. Um, and then how, how to calculate some statistical measures like variance and standard deviation that will help us measure and hopefully predict what might happen in the future. Some words of wisdom, great underlying rules of finance, there is a reward for bearing risk, and the greater the potential reward, the greater the risk. Uh, in this session, we're going to look at five different learning objectives. First, we're going to look at return on investment, some of these instruments and how you calculate it. Then we'll look at the historical record put together by uh, Ibbotson and Sinkfeld in a famous study, and uh, they detail what has happened to uh, key investment areas in the last 80 years. Uh, we'll look at average returns, we'll look at the variability of returns in terms of variance and standard deviation, and we'll look at capital market efficiency. First, uh, objective return on investment. Uh, return on investment is money gained or lost from an investment. So might we have a positive return, we might have a positive return or a negative return uh, in your investing lives. You'll see an income component in many of these investments and a capital gain component. So when you buy a stock, you're trying to look for price appreciation, which we're going to call the capital gain. And you might be also looking for a dividend. Not all stocks pay dividend, but some do. And you might be an income investor uh, where you're looking for some price appreciation or capital gain and some uh, dividend payment out also. So uh, total return is equal to dividend income plus capital gain or loss. That will give you your total dollar return. And we like in a lot of cases to talk about percentages. Um, we don't get really excited when we say, if you might talk to a friend and you say, well, I invested $1,000 and I made $480, they get somewhat excited. But if you say I made a 48% return on investment, everyone wants to know what stock you just bought. So uh, we'll break our total return down into two components as we had in session eight, dividend yield, which is D1 over P0 or D sub T plus one over P sub T and capital gains yield, which is P sub T plus one minus P sub T over P sub T. It always takes on the form when you're looking at a price appreciation or depreciation, X2 minus X1 over X1 is always the way to calculate it. Um, so total percent return is uh, D sub T plus one over P sub T plus P sub T plus one minus P sub T over P sub T. Again, that has a common denominator, so you can uh, jam all of those together if you so choose and do, and do it as one equation versus two pieces. Let's look at an example on return on investment. Uh, suppose you bought some stock at the beginning of the year for $25 per share. The stock went up to $35 per share by the end of the year. In addition, you got a $2 dividend per share. What's the dividend yield, capital gains yield, and the total percentage return? And if you invested $1,000, how much do you have at the end of the year? So we draw a little map of this. And you see the price going from $25 to $35 on this uh, slide with the $2 dividend being thrown in. And again, we can calculate our total percentage return by putting together the two pieces, dividend yield plus capital gains yield. So your dividend yield will be your uh, $2 over the initial price, D1 again over P0, and that's $2 over $25 or 8%. So you have a nice rich 8% dividend on this stock. And then we can look at our price appreciation or capital gain yield, uh, P1 minus P0 over P0, 35 minus 25 over 25, and I get a 40% capital gain yield. So fabulous return on this stock during this year. My total return is dividend yield plus capital gain yield, 48%. Uh, so if you invested $1,000, your investment will have grown to $1,480. Again, people don't get too excited if you say your investment went up 480 bucks. Someone might say, big what? But if you say, my investment went up 48%, what stock is this? Everyone's curious. So many times your returns are uh, talked about in terms of percentage gain or loss.